Okay, last video for um, my uh, August 2017 final hauls. There will be a Spotify playlist that I'll link. Uh, and uh, it was recommended to me that I split up my videos a little bit because of the length, <laughs> you know, some of them. So my videos were like an hour, hour and a half long. So I'm gonna split them up via genre. And uh, this is the metal video. These are all the metal records that I bought in August of 2017. The first metal record, <laughs> technically isn't a metal record, but it came out approximately 1974. Uh, and this is a basically a Halloween record. It's called The Sounds, what is it? Blood Curdling Terror, Horror, or, or I'm sorry, Blood Curdling Terror, Horror, Stereo, Sounds to Make You Shiver. Uh, listen in terror to Count Dracula screaming along with his victim. Go mad in the haunted house. Hear Frankenstein break loose. Horrific sounds for Halloween fun. This is a Pickwick record. Has Frankenstein storming out of the castle here uh, with a bunch of other monsters. Uh, this is kind of a fun record to have if you're into Halloween sounds. And the album cover is fantastic. As is the uh, center label uh, of a giant skull. It'd be cool if it was glow in the dark. I don't think it is, but actually it might be. I don't know. Nah, it's not. It's not, but it would be cool if it was. Uh, it's just a Halloween sounds record. I have a few of these. Um, you know, it's basically a haunted house. I play these on Halloween, um, you know, for the neighbors outside. I'll just put my speakers in the window and play records like this, like the Halloween soundtrack and things like that, and, and Halloween sounds as I'm giving out candy to kids. Um, pretty fun record. I actually had this when I was a really young kid. Uh, and I listen to it all the time. There's a record that'll be coming up much later in my uh, vinyl halls uh, about, uh, you know, some other Halloween records that I bought, but this is a pretty cool one. Uh, if you're, you know, if you ever see this and you want a Halloween sounds record, this one is pretty fun. Uh, you know, 1970s <laughs> cheesiness kind of. I don't know if any there's any modern records like this. Uh, it'd be interesting if there were, like, because nowadays, especially... Um, they can make the sound effects and stuff sound pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, they sound really good on here. You know, I can just imagine, you know, in the studio, you know, them using all kinds of tricks, uh, you know, to make all these sounds uh, happen. Because uh, they're obviously not in a haunted castle. <laughs> and Frankenstein's really not running around. So they're kind of creating all these sounds using probably old, you know, recording tricks from the old radio days and stuff like that when they used to do mystery shows or whatever. Anyway, pretty cool record. Throwing this in the metal section because it's metal. All right, the next record I bought came out September 14th, 1984. And this is a classic uh, from the band. Uh, this is uh, Dokken, Tooth and Nail. This is probably one of their best records. Uh, Back for the Attack is probably my favorite, but this is really, really close. Second, probably. Um Without warning, tooth and nail, just got lucky uh, when heaven comes down into the fire, turn on the action, all great, great songs. Uh, look at these guys, they look fantastic. Uh, yeah, this record was really, really good. Uh, it It's an early record, 1984, so this is kind of right after Quiet Riot hit and the glam metal scene, uh, or at that point it would just be like the heavy metal uh, scene, you know, started kicking in, but what we now co call kind of hair metal, uh, as a term, even though it's not the best term, it is a term. Uh, I prefer to call it glam metal, you know, and my reason for that, I'll just explain that a little bit. Back in the seventies, you know, we had glam rock, right? You know, David Bowie, Slade, you know, a bunch of bands like that, that kind of self-identified even as glam, you know, glam or glitter rock. Um, and it was not only the music, you know, it was heavier, you know, music was getting heavier and stuff and it still had a poppy edge, you know, uh, but it was also the look, you know, I mean, like a lot of those artists were putting on makeup, wearing outfits, you know, fashion, fashion was part of the music in a way, you know, especially with Bowie, you know, uh, you know, he was kind of the epitome of it and kind of the same with, with glam metal and i just say metal because you know it definitely has a more heavy metal feel to it you know the guitars are faster the the music is more uh you know heavier 
uh, but it still has that pop, popness to it, you know, it still has those sugar choruses, you know, sing-along choruses and stuff like that, you know, so there is definitely a pop, uh, that's why I think a lot of people call this pop metal, you know, in some cases, but I wouldn't go that far because I don't think it's poppy enough to be pop metal, you know, it's not no baby metal or anything like that where that to me is like almost pure pop metal, that, that's, or poppy even, you know, like the band Poppy, you know, that, that, you know, kind of really, really blur you know put it put in a lot of heavy metal into the pop music where in this case they're kind of adding a little bit of pop into their heavy metal uh you know but anyway i, I prefer to call it glam metal because it, it's glammy and it has that feel to me but it's just with the heavy metal uh flavor to it um yeah dockin fits that i think perfectly uh and this is a fantastic album uh from dockin uh Another album I bought, uh, October 9th, came out October 9th, 1984. Uh, yeah, so I haven't seen this record in the bin at used probably since. And this is Armored Saint, uh, March of the Saint. This is their first album. This album cover is fantastic, by the way. I fucking love it. It's so cheesy. I love album covers like this that are just like, you know, when you're a teenager or maybe early 20s, these guys probably thought this was fucking badass. And, you know, looking at it now, we're just like, that's kind of cheesy. But Armored Saint, it totally fit. You know, it's like they they were on theme, 100%. Uh, and then, of course, on the back, you know, instead of being on horses, they're on their motorbikes, you know, their, their motorcycles. Um, this is a great record as well. Uh, all the Armored Saint records are, and I, I sometimes I use this term not in the best way, not, not really the best way, but not in a you know, most loving way. But in this case, I am. Uh, they are very, very consistent. They are a very consistent band, heavy metal band, LA band. Um, and yeah, they're fantastic. Like every record sounds similar to the one previous, but you can see they're just growing as musicians, you know, and, and as songwriters. Uh, they just keep getting better and better and better, uh, in my opinion. And yeah, I have quite a few of their early stuff. Uh, probably the first four or five records and they're all really really good and I highly recommend all of them I don't I wouldn't uh, you know pass any of them up uh, if you see them in the bin somewhere especially used but some of the new ones all these have been reissued actually by Metal Blade uh, I think the first four albums uh, first three for sure maybe just the first three up to Raising Fear but um, yeah really really good stuff from Robert Saint on this album um March of the Saint is great. Uh, yeah, it's interesting because I need to listen to these albums more because the songs kind of, I don't want to say they blur together, but they're all kind of really good. It's all really consistent. So no, no one song really just pops out and stands out as like, oh my God, that was an amazing song. Because they're all kind of amazing. They're all kind of really good. So yeah, I would pick up an Armored Saint record at any point in time. Pretty much any Armored Saint record at this point. They really haven't put out a bad one. Um, and this was their first album, March of the Saint. Really good album. Now this guy, this guy's got an ego. <laughs> April 8th, 1988. Kind of rightfully so. You know, he is a great guitar player. Uh, this is Malmsteen, uh, Rising Force. This was his more of more of his glam metal uh, phase, you know. He kind of, like some of the other, I don't know, his previous records are after this. Trilogy, the Trilogy album, uh, you know, which was more power metal, you know. Uh and this this has some of that elements. There are some songs on here that are power metal, but because uh, and Joel and Turner sings on here, which is fantastic. He's really really good. Uh, he used to sing for Rainbow uh, and Deep Purple. Did he sing for Rainbow? Maybe he just sang for Deep Purple. I can't remember now. All of a sudden, uh, Polydor. This came out on yeah, Ingvay Malmsteen's Rising Force. This is definitely more of his uh, glam metal stuff, though. Uh, especially the song uh, Heaven Tonight. Is it? Yeah, I think, yeah, it's Heaven Tonight. That song is just like, yeah, this could be Paradise, that song. I mean, when when they played that song, though, on Headbangers Ball at the time, I really liked that song, you know, as far as a uh, glam metal song. It's really good, but it's really poppy. Uh, this is definitely Malmsteen's more poppy stuff. Um, and it's just really good. Joel and Turner sings on this, which is fantastic. Uh, really enjoy that. Uh, Yngwie, yep. Not much else to say. Really good. Produced by Mike Barbero. 
or mixed by Mark Bar Bar Barbario. Yeah, anyway, good record. If you see it, I would pick it up. This next record is, oh, it's probably, it's probably top five best thrash metal records ever made. June 27th, 1988, Violence put out Eternal Nightmare, Repka cover. Uh, yeah. Fantastic album. This is one of the best thrash metal records ever made. Sean Killian's vocals are so unique and so, you know, like I said, I like that high vocal stuff. Uh, in the past. I just love this album. The thrash riffs on here are fantastic. The lyrics are funny, gross, you know, uh, hilarious, uh, you know, really good stuff. Uh, Eternal Nightmare, the beginning of that song is my ringtone for my phone. It has been for so many years. Uh, I just love that, that riff. Um, this is a five out of five album for thrash metal. Um, and I know this record is going really expensive right now. This is not an original press, but uh, even this repress. My repress is weird, too. Like, my side three and four have... Or no, it's side one and two. No, it is side three and four. Has uh, A-side labels on both sides. <laughs> or B-side labels. I can't remember which. Um, yeah. D side labels. Yeah. So I have two side D's. <laughs> so I put a little sticker on here that shows that that is side C. Um, so that my pressing is a little unique from that. Uh, this album did not need to be on two records. Maybe the extra stuff could have been thrown on, on record two, but they, I think they should have just put the whole album on one whole, the whole uh, studio album up until up, up to kill on command on side A and B. Um, but anyway, doesn't matter, I guess. You know, it's just you got to get to that third album to listen to Kill and Command, which is one of my favorite songs. <laughs> I love that song. I think it's hilarious. Stand still and make my job easier. Yeah, so great thrash metal album, Violence, everybody on here. Sean Killian, uh, Rob Flynn, though, especially, uh, went on to do Machine Head and became obviously much more... Um, I guess successful uh violence is second record uh i forget the name of it right now um i can't remember uh had officer nice on it that album was not as good it was a major label album i don't know if that had anything to do with it but it just wasn't as good i would still get that record in a heartbeat though if, if it came out on vinyl i don't think it's ever released on vinyl at least not in the u.s for sure um Five out of five. Nothing else to say. Fantastic record. Great art, cover art. The, the sound on the album is great. And yeah, the recording, the guitar tone, fantastic. Uh, Eternal Nightmare. Really good album. All right. Uh, the Snack Record came out April 4th, 1989. And it's an album, uh, Soraya. It's the self titled. Uh, this album is really good. Uh, lead singer uh, Sandy Soraya is on this, of course, female vocals. Uh, I really enjoy that uh, part of this record. Uh, and the songs are just really, really, really good on this album. This is this is just a really good uh, glam metal record. Um, you know, it's kind of Pat Benatar-ish, you know, in a way. There's a lot of really good songs on here. There's there's just some really good songs in here. Love is Taking Us Toll is great. Heal and Touch is great. Get You Ready. Gypsy Child is really good. One Night Away. All the songs are good. Uh, Back to the Bullet is excellent. Uh, St. Christopher's Metal. There's some really, really good songs on here. One thing I noticed on this record is um, she doesn't use a lot of pronouns. Like, I think there's only two songs out of all these, out of all the songs where she says him or something like that. Every other song is gender neutral. I just I just kind of noticed that because I was like, I always think about that sometimes, you know, when female singers are singing and versus a male singer. And then if they do cover songs of each other's songs, you know, like a love song or something, some sometimes 
the the writer or the or the singer or of the or the band or whatever of the cover song will change the pronouns to he or she based on you know who they're singing about you know or who they want to be singing about uh than whatever the original was and that could be a different gender than the original um but and you know so i always find that interesting right you know which way are they going to go I always kind of wish that they would keep the gender the same, especially if it's, you know, a female artist and they would use she all the time for the songs that they record as she. I just think that'd be, you know, funny or whatever. Uh, I just, I just would, uh, sometimes they do that, but a lot of times they don't. Uh, anyway, on this album, I think there's really only two instances or, or a couple where she uses gender pronouns, which I thought was really interesting. I don't know. I highly doubt that that was on purpose, um, but I just found it really interesting. This came out on Polydor. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I just found that interesting when I was listening to it. I was like, because like I said, I kind of look for that sometimes, you know, uh, just to see, you know, what they're doing, you know, in, in that respect in the songwriting, uh, in the lyrics. But on this album, it's rare that she uses a him uh, or, or whatever uh, pronoun. Anyway, the Saraya record is really good. It's usually, I've seen it a few times, but only a couple, only like two or three times have I seen this in the wild. Uh, obviously the first time I ever saw it, I bought it, got this at Manifest. Uh, it was probably like 15, 20 bucks. I, I, you know, a lot of these records are way more than that now. I don't know if the Soraya one is, but it, this is a really good record. Uh, I'll put Love Has Taken Its Toll on the, the playlist because that's a really good song. Um, I'd like to put more songs, but you know, obviously I don't want to make the playlists too long. Um, and if you like Love Has Taken Its Toll, then you should check out the rest of the album. All right, two more for metal, uh, kind of metal records that I bought. February 16th, 1990. This is Death, Spiritual Healing, another Repka uh, cover. Um, yeah, fantastic album cover. Uh, Ed Repka does a great job. And... This album came out in 1990. Uh, I, this was, yeah, Leprosy. I had heard Leprosy when I was younger, you know, and I had that on cassette. I think I borrowed it and recorded it from somebody, you know, and so I was into death. And then, but when Spiritual Healing came out, I th think it came out either, I can't remember if it came out before or after Obituary. I think it came out after Cause of Death. And James Murphy was playing guitar on Cause of Death. He was like in the band, I guess, at the time. And his guitar solos are just fantastic. And so uh, Chuck had him on this record to do uh, the solos. Uh, James Murphy did all the, all or, or a lot, uh, or at least a solo on every uh, song on here. And this album just has great, great fucking riffs really really good riffs so many memorable riffs excellent excellent this between this and human i go back and forth as which one is my number one you know they're on any given day like when i when i'm listening to spiritual healing it's my number one death record when i'm listening to human it's my number one death record you know so death kind of has that effect and and some of the other stuff too that i listen to you know the, I'm like, man, these, Death was great. Chuck Schuldiner was a genius. He really was. Uh, who knows what he'd be doing today. It would be amazing. To, I think he would have a ton of side projects. You know, Death would be like his main band, but he'd probably just do tons of side projects like Control Denied. I think he'd be doing tons of stuff like that, uh, off the beaten path stuff, you know, stuff that he wouldn't, you know, stuff as far away from Death as possible, you know, and then he'd come back to Death. I, I really think that that's something that he would be doing. Um, but anyway, great record, Spiritual Healing. So many good riffs on here. Spiritual Healing, of course, Altering the Future within them. I mean, Jennifer Peter Killing Spree, everything. Every song on here is good. Great record. All right, the last record that I have came out March 12, 2014. I like this band, um, and it's The Pretty Reckless. This is uh, Taylor Momsen's band. Um, she used to be, and she actually was the little girl singer in How the Grinch Sold Christmas live action movie with Jim Carrey. She sings at the end of that movie. Um, so she's always kind of been a singer. Um, 
And we got some risque photos here, but we only see a butt shot here. But, you know, uh, really good stuff here, man. I, I really enjoy uh, Taylor Momsen stuff. I know not everybody, I guess, appreciates it as much as I do. Uh, I know that there's, you know, I don't know, maybe a backlash or whatever. But I think I think she's kind of overcome a lot of that now, you know. You know, obviously, I think, you know, being a movie star or whatever um, and coming into music, you know, some people might be thinking, you know, eh, what are you doing? You know, uh, you just, you know, are, are you really a musician? Things like that. Do you really like music? But I really think that she's proven that this is kind of her her number one thing. And she's dropped acting completely. You know, I, mean, she, I don't think she's done any acting since she started The Pretty Reckless, really. Um, and all these songs are great. There's some really good songs in here. Follow Me Down, Going to Hell, Heaven Knows. She does a really good job with those gang choruses, you know, like with kids singing and kid choirs. She did that on the new record, too. I just really like Pretty Reckless. I think they're a great hard rock band. Uh, I actually file this under glam metal uh, because I really think that, um, you know, like Headbangers Ball, if Headbangers Ball was still on, and Pretty Reckless came out with an album like this, they would be played constantly. They would fit in right with that type of music. Um, and I think they'd be pretty popular. Uh, I really do. Um, more popular than they are now. And they're they're doing, a, a, I think, a co-headlining tour with Hall, not Halsey. Um, I forget her name. Uh, that other band. <laughs> I don't have any of their records. I have all, uh, all but like the the first record for Pretty Reckless. That's one thing I'd like to say is that I wish that the first album from Pretty Reckless would come out on vinyl, because um, I really really like that record, uh, Light Me Up or whatever. I, I think it's called Light Me Up, uh, something like that. Light my, it's not Light My Fire. Uh, anyway, really good record. Uh, this was her second record. Yeah, this is her second record. Uh, going to Hell. And their third record was pretty something. And then uh, the new one, um, Death by Rock and Roll. All fantastic records. I really liked Pretty Reckless. I really liked Taylor Momsen's voice. Uh, I think her stage presence has improved. Uh, you know, she was really stiff there in the beginning. Uh, but I think she's gotten a lot better. Um, yeah, I think it's a great album. Pretty Reckless. I would, I listen to this. I listened to the, the new record, Death Death by Rock and Roll, was in my top 10 of 2021, I think. Or 20, yeah, 2021. Um, and I really, really love that record. I think it's really, really good. All right, that's all the uh, metal uh, records that I have. And I do put Pretty Reckless, like I said, I, I file it under Glam because I think it, it really fits that. It's, it's more hard rock, alternative hard rock, but, you know, I think it... I really think it's like, it's one of those, I can't categorize it, you know, perfectly. You know what I mean? Like in my collection, I guess it could be just hard rock. Uh, but, but I really just think it has a little bit more than that. Uh, it's a little bit heavier than just regular hard rock. And it really has that, uh, glam feel to it. I think, um, you know, there's different genres of glam metal as well. You know, there's like the sleazy stuff, the more po polished stuff, the prolific guitar players, things like that. This just kind of falls into almost like a, I don't know, I think they could tour with Guns N' Roses really easily. You know, like they could really be part of that, almost like a mix between the sleaze and the, you know, just the good hard heavy metal, hard rock um, stuff. So I think it just fits right in there. All right, that's all for the records of August uh, 2017. And like I said, I'll make a playlist. Uh, appreciate you watching and listening. Thanks. Bye.